Yo, what's up guys, Nandro here with yet another video. This video is going to be by popular request. Now, in my last video, Midrange Dirt vs. Solana Haven and D-Shift, I believe it was, some people noticed that in my match history, I had actually played versus HSK Sizoni. Now, if you don't know who Sizoni is, he's actually... He's actually one of those ladder hero type players that usually tends to have quite quite a few se several thousand points at the at the end of each and every season. Like I believe last season he ended at like thirty five k, so so it so was enough for him to get into top into top one k master or sorry into top yeah into top one k master, as well as get tears globe, and he routinely manages to finish collecting. 100k score each and uh before way before the end of each and every month like i believe last month he he had 100 100k which is which is the maximum amount of score you can get as far as rewards go which is very very impressive because for example for me i only i usually only make it past like 20k or something like that <laughs> but yeah, uh, he's a pretty he's a pretty ac accomplished player overall and a pretty good friend now as you see here, this is actually a private match. I had actually got on the private match quest. However, why I'm going to be showing the game <laughs> is because he actually debated me slightly, and I wasn't expecting him to want to. I wasn't expecting him to make me want to play out the game all the way. So, so we're gonna go into the game. At the moment, he's trying to get his Haven his Haven Craft adept, adept title, which I believe is either his second to last, or maybe even his last title that he needs to get, so. So he was just trying to practice versus me. Alright, now, ordinarily, versus, versus the average player, like, th this, to be, this matchup would be fine for me. However, Sizer isn't your average player. <laughs> He's generally playing pretty pretty aggressive decks, and he also doesn't fall into a lot a lot of the traps that other players fall into when they play a deck, just because he actually puts in the time, does the research, and and understands what he's doing. He also more 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 or less most likely knows what I'm playing, just because I had played a I, just because I had shown him the video of of me versus something of me playing dirt versus something or whatever earlier or er, er, like like uh like a few hours prior uh, a few hour a few hours prior to this video but yeah so i keep the hand that i keep just because i'm expecting him to want to want to concede on turn two like <laughs> but then he doesn't now i'm like shit <laughs> like the second he played the card i'm like oh god because I actually haven't been watching a stream lately. The only thing that I knew was that, okay, well, he's going to be Havencraft, and he's most likely going to be Stormhaven. I haven't played versus Stormhaven that much for this deck, but I, but I would imagine that I'm, like, unfavored. So here, I got Elementary Alchemy. There is some merit to me going Levi, and maybe going Levi would have just been better, but I, wanted, but I wanted the Sigil to get it in play in case he played something like Temple Defender or Grimnair. Because ordinarily, that Temple Defender would be would be a gigantic roadblock for me. However, I'm gonna be able to, to to throw in three damage to it, kill it, and then go face for four. I would have I would have greatly preferred if all if all of that damage went face, just so that way he would be at at, at eleven. However, I'm just not that lucky. So here he has pre he, he has yeah, he has Priest of the Cudgel. The Cudgel is really good here just because it will have enough HP left. And it has enough attack damage that I, that I just can't really kill it unless I see Levi. So here, I just try to make an aggressive play and just try to get and just try to go for face, just because he already has more Evos than me, and. And I, and I just need to like step. I just need to try to establish Thomas as fast as possible. But then here he plays. All right, so we're gonna pause here. First, he plays Power of Protection, which 
gives it gives this cudgel a little bit more HP, and then also gives it ward. So, so now so now I have to go through that if I want to hit his face again. And then he also plays Mist Shaman. The Mist Shaman is important just because it made the cudgel untargetable. So even if I wanted to go with something like uh, like Crimson Sorcery or whatnot, I can't do that now, and I have to actually I have to actually fair trade into that. But that's important because. He's either going to take an Evo from me, or I'm sorry, he's 100% going to take an Evo from me, and he's also going to, to guarantee that my, he's also going to guarantee to slow me down, and, and this means I can now play something like Themis next turn, and if he plays that, and if he has that Themis, uh, th there's nothing I can do about it, uh, like, I, I didn't get a single Evo for a Levi or whatnot, so, so losing that Crimson Sorcery damage, that was important. Just because you really need that for reach, just because Dirt doesn't really have as much reach as other decks. Like for example, you're not going to have near nearly as much reach as you would have if you were like playing Blood. Alright, so there, I did search last, which, which, which was a mistake. You should always, you should always go ahead and want to search first. Just because if I had pulled maybe say something like Levi, that would, that would have been pretty good. But here I go ahead and brick, and I just have a lot of Fate's hands, and I can't really do anything with it. And I'm just trying to pray that okay, maybe I can make it to turn ten, and I can go ahead and play Grimner. I needed to play out the Illusionist. However, I didn't play it out just because he still had an Evo left, and, and I was kind of I was kind of afraid of second cudgel or, or the Themis. Just because I need for when I play that card, for, for that card to stick on the board for a while. Just because he he's retaking control of the board and he's gonna make it all, all, like next to impossible for me to ever hit his face again. So so here I, I, I go ahead and play the Fate's Hand. I draw bricks. Like Levi Levi would have been really good there, but I didn't get it. And then now he plays with the goblin. The goblin was so confusing. I, I was like, wait, he's playing goblins? But here, he plays the Shrine Knight Maiden. The Shrine Knight Maiden is huge because now suddenly all of his guys have hexproof. So, so even if I drew, so even if I draw something in order to target them, I suddenly can't target them. Like, like I get the Halo Golem here. Halo Golem would have been so nice and would have kept me in the game most likely. However, because I can't target anything, now I suddenly have to go Halo Golem on, on his face. Trade trade into Temple Defender, but the Halo Golem is gonna die due to uh, due to Danis, Oracle yeah, Oracle of Iniquity. And now I'm just praying that he doesn't have a removal spell. If he doesn't have a removal slayer, yeah, if he doesn't have a removal here, that's fine because it means I'll live. However, he does have the Valhall in general to go ahead and power and emp power up his goblin to get through my ward and go ahead and kill me. Yeah. This game, this game is pretty wild, and and he concedes because again, he knew he knew that, that this was what was that this was for a private match. He just wanted to play it out just because he, I guess, he wanted to toss versus me. So yeah, pretty crazy game overall. Um, one thing that I could have possibly done was to maybe was to maybe play out one of my else yeah, maybe play out the Grimner maybe a little bit earlier so that way I wouldn't be taking as much damage. However, I I just wanted to try to. To, to try to use it to try to keep the Grimner so that way I would have reach. I didn't see a Levi at all that game, which was kind of huge, but I don't think it would have changed that much. But yeah, pretty crazy game. Again, shout outs to Saizo. Make sure you go ahead and catch a stream because he, he does actually stream pretty consistently too. And I'll go ahead and leave the link down, below, down, the, uh, down in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.